Now, that this is the faith for which God of his free grace justifies sinful man, for it is God alone that justifieth, Romans 8. 33, Romans 3. 26, we have already showed, by observing through all the history of our Saviour and the Apostles, recorded in the Evangelists, and in the Acts, what he and his Apostles preached, and proposed to be believed. We shall show now, that besides believing him to be the Messiah, their King, it was farther required, that those who would have the privilege, advantage, and deliverance of his kingdom, should enter themselves into it, and by baptism being made denizens, and solemnly incorporated into that kingdom, live as became subjects obedient to the laws of it. For if they believed him to be the Messiah, their king, but would not obey his laws, and would not have him to reign over them, they were but the greater rebels, and God would not justify them for a faith that did but increase their guilt and oppose diametrically the kingdom and design of the Messiah, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Titus 2. 14 And therefore St. Paul tells the Galatians, that that which availeth is faith, but faith working by love. And that faith without works, 1. e the works of sincere obedience to the law and will of Christ, is not sufficient for our justification, St. James shows at large, chapter 2, neither, indeed, could it be otherwise, for life, eternal life, being the reward of justice or righteousness only, appointed by the righteous God, who is of purer eyes than to behold iniquity, to those who only had no taint or infection of sin upon them, it is impossible that he should justify those who had no regard to justice at all whatever they believed. This would have been to encourage iniquity, contrary to the purity of his nature, and to have condemned that eternal law of right, which is holy, just, and good, of which no one precept or rule is abrogated or repealed, nor indeed can be, whilst God is an holy, just, and righteous God and man a rational creature. The duties of that law, arising from the constitution of his very nature, are of eternal obligation, nor can it be taken away or dispensed with, without changing the nature of things, overturning the measures of right and wrong, and thereby introducing and authorizing irregularity, confusion, and disorder in the world. Christ's coming into the world was not for such an end as that, but, on the contrary, to reform the corrupt state, of degenerate man, and out of those who would mend their lives, and bring forth fruit meat for repentance, erect a new kingdom. This is the law of that kingdom, as well as of all mankind, and that law, by which all men shall be judged at the last day. Only those who have believed Jesus to be the Messiah, and have taken him to be their king, with a sincere endeavor after righteousness, in obeying his law, shall have their past sins not imputed to them, and shall have that faith taken instead of obedience, where frailty and weakness made them transgress, and sin prevailed after conversion, in those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, or perfect obedience, and do not allow themselves in acts of disobedience and rebellion against the laws of that kingdom they are entered into. He did not expect, it is true, a perfect obedience, void of slips and falls. He knew our make, and the weakness of our constitution too well, and was sent with a supply for that defect. Besides, perfect obedience was the righteousness of the law of works, and then the reward would be of debt, and not of grace and to such there was no need of faith to be imputed to them for righteousness. They stood upon their own legs, were just already, and needed no allowance to be made them for believing Jesus to be the Messiah, taking him for their king, and becoming his subjects. But that Christ does require obedience, sincere obedience, is evident from the law he himself delivers, unless he can be supposed to give and inculcate laws 
only to have them disobeyed, and from the sentence he will pass when he comes to judge. The faith required was, to believe Jesus to be the Messiah, the Anointed, who had been promised by God to the world. Among the Jews, to whom the promises and prophecies of the Messiah were more immediately delivered, anointing was used to three sorts of persons, at their inauguration, whereby they were set apart to three great offices, viz. of priests, prophets, and kings. Though these three offices be in holy writ attributed to our Saviour, yet I do not remember that he any, where assumes to himself the title of a priest, or mentions anything relating to his priesthood, nor does he speak of his being a prophet but very sparingly, and only once or twice, as it were by the by, but the gospel, or the good news of the kingdom of the Messiah, is what he preaches everywhere, and makes it his great business to publish to the world. This he did not only as most agreeable to the expectation of the Jews, who looked for the Messiah, chiefly as coming in power to be their king and deliverer, but as it best answered the chief end of his coming, which was to be a king, and, as such, to be received by those who would be his subjects in the kingdom which he came to erect. And though he took not directly on himself the title of king, until he was in custody, and in the hands of Pilate, yet it is plain, king and king of Israel, were the familiar and received titles of the Messiah. See John 1. 50. Luke 19, 38, compared with Matthew 21, 9, and Mark 11, 9, John 12, 13, Matthew 21, 5, Luke 23, 2, compared with Matthew 27, 11, and John 18, 33 to 37, Mark 15, 12, compared with Matthew 27. 22, 42. What those were to do, who believed him to be the Messiah, and received him for their king, that they might be admitted to be partakers with him of his kingdom and glory, we shall best know by the laws he gives them, and requires them to obey, and by the sentence which he himself will give, when sitting on his throne they shall all appear at his tribunal, to receive every one his doom from the mouth of this righteous judge of all men. What he proposed to his followers to be believed, we have already seen, by examining his and his apostles preaching, step by step, all through the history of the four evangelists, and the acts of the apostles. The same method will best and plainest show us, whether he required of those who believed him to be the Messiah, anything besides that faith and what it was, for, he being a king, we shall see by his commands what he expects from his subjects, for, if he did not expect obedience to them, his commands would be but mere mockery, and if there were no punishment for the transgressors of them, his laws would not be the laws of a king, and that authority to command, and power to chastise the disobedient, but empty talk, without force, and without influence. We shall therefore from his injunctions, if any such the be, see what he has made necessary to be performed, by all those who shall be received into eternal life, in his kingdom prepared in the heavens. And in this we cannot be deceived. What we have from his own mouth, especially if repeated over and over again, in different places and expressions, will be past doubt and controversy. I shall pass by all that is said by St. John Baptist, or any other before our Saviour's entry upon his ministry, and public promulgation of the laws of his kingdom. He began his preaching with a command to repent, as St. Matthew tells us, 4, 17. From that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Luke 5. 32, he tells the scribes and Pharisees, I come not to call the righteous, those who were truly so, needed no help, they had a right to the tree of life, but sinners, to repentance. In his sermon, as it is called, in the Mount, Luke 6, and Matthew 5 and 100, he commands they should be exemplary in good works, 
let your light so shine amongst men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven, Matthew 5. 15. And that they might know what he came for, and what he expected of them, he tells them, verse 17 to 20, Think not that I am come to dissolve, or loosen, the law, or the prophets, I am not come to dissolve, or loosen, but to make it full, or complete, by giving it you in its true and strict sense. Here we see he confirms, and at once re, enforces all the moral precepts in the Old Testament. For verily I say to you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be done. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least, I, E. As it is interpreted, shall not be at all, in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 21, I say unto you, that except your righteousness. 1. E. Your performance of the eternal law of right, shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then he goes on to make good what he said, verse 17, viz. That he was come to complete the law, viz. By giving its full and clear sense, free from the corrupt and loosening glosses of the scribes and Pharisees, verse 22 to 26. He tells them, that not only murder, but causeless anger, and so much as words of contempt, were forbidden. He commands them to be reconciled and kind towards their adversaries, and that upon pain of condemnation. In the following part of his sermon, which is to be read Luke 6, and more at large, Matthew 5, 6, 7. He not only forbids actual uncleanness, but all irregular desires, upon pain of hell, fire, causeless divorces, swearing in conversation, as well as forswearing in judgment, revenge, retaliation, ostentation of charity, of devotion, and of fasting, repetitions in prayer, covetousness, worldly care censoriousness, and on the other side commands loving our enemies, doing good to those that hate us, blessing those that curse us, praying for those that despitefully use us, patience and meekness under injuries, forgiveness, liberality, compassion, and closes all his particular injunctions, with this general golden rule, Matthew 7. 12. All things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. And to show how much he is in earnest, and expects obedience to these laws, he tells them, Luke 6. 35, that if they obey, great shall be their reward, they shall be called the sons of the highest. And to all this, in the conclusion, he adds the solemn sanction, Why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? It is in vain for you to take me for the Messiah your King, unless you obey me. Not every one who calls me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, or be the sons of God, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. To such disobedient subjects, Though they have prophesied and done miracles in my name, I shall say at the day of judgment, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I know you not. When, Matthew 12, he was told, that his mother and brethren sought to speak with him, verse 49, stretching out his hands to his disciples, he said, Behold my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father, who is in heaven, he is my brother, and sister, and mother. They could not be children of the adoption, and fellow heirs with him of eternal life, who did not do the will of his heavenly Father. Matthew 15. And Mark 6. The Pharisees finding fault, that his disciples eat with unclean hands, he makes this declaration to his apostles, Do not ye perceive that whatsoever from without entereth into a man cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, 
but his belly, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, false witnesses, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these ill things come from within, and defile a man. He commands self-denial, and the exposing ourselves to suffering and danger, rather than to deny or disown him, and this upon pain of losing our souls, which are of more worth than all the world. This we may read, Matthew 16. 24-27, and the parallel places, Mark 8, and Luke 9, the apostles disputing among them, who should be greatest in the kingdom of the Messiah, Matthew 18, 1, he thus determines the controversy, Mark 9, 35, if anyone will be first, let him be last of all, and servant of all, and setting a child before the mads, Matthew 18, 3, Verily I say unto you, Unless ye turn, and become as children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, 15, If thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church, but if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee, as an heathen and publican. Verse 21, Peter said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him, till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, till seven times, but until seventy times seven. And then ends the parable of the servant, who being himself forgiven, was rigorous to his fellow, servant, with these words, verse 34, and his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due to him, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Luke 10. 25, to the lawyer, asking him, What shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said, What is written in the law? How readest thou? He answered, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus said, This do, and thou shalt live. And when the lawyer, upon our Saviour's parable of the Good Samaritan, was forced to confess, that he that showed mercy was his neighbour, Jesus dismissed him with this charge, verse 37, Go, and do thou likewise. Luke 11, 41, Give alms, of such things as ye have, behold all things are clean unto you. Luke 12, 15, Take heed, and beware of covetousness. Verse 22, Be not solicitous what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor what ye shall put on. Be not fearful, or apprehensive of want, for it is your father's pleasure to give you a kingdom. So that you have, and give alms, and provide yourselves bags that wax not old, a treasure in the heavens, that faileth not, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, let your loins be girded, and your lights burning, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for the Lord when he will return. Blessed are those servants, whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Blessed is that servant, whom the Lord having made ruler of his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season, the Lord, when he cometh shall find so doing, of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delath his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants, and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, 
and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with unbelievers. And that servant who knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required, and to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Luke 14. 11. Whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Verse 12. When thou makest a dinner, or supper, call not thy friends, or thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy neighbours, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, and maimed, the lame and the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Verse 33, So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that is not ready to forego all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Luke 14. 9, I say unto you, Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. If ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Luke 17. 3. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again unto thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Luke 18. 1. He spoke a parable to them to this end, that men ought always to pray, and not to faint. Verse 18. One comes to him and asks him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He says, Which? Jesus said, Thou knowest the commandments, Thou shalt not kill, Thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness, defraud not, honour thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. He said, All these have I observed from my youth. Jesus, hearing this, loved him, and said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. To understand this right, we must take notice, that this young man asks our Saviour, what he must do to be admitted effectually into the kingdom of the Messiah. The Jews believed, that when the Messiah came, those of their nation that received him, should not die, but that they, with those who, being dead, should then be raised again by him, should enjoy eternal life with him. Our Saviour, in answer to this demand, tells the young man, that to obtain the eternal life of the kingdom of the Messiah, he must keep the commandments. And then enumerating several of the precepts of the law, the young man says, he had observed these from his childhood, for which the text tells us, Jesus loved him. But our Saviour, to try whether in earnest he believed him to be the Messiah, and resolved to take him to be his king, and to obey him as such, bids him give all that he has to the poor, and come, and follow him, and he should have treasure in heaven. This I look on to be the meaning of the place, this, of selling all he had, and giving it to the poor, not being a standing law of his kingdom, but a probationary command to this young man, to try whether he truly believed him to be the Messiah, and was ready to obey his commands, and relinquish all to follow him, when he, his prince, required it. And therefore we see, Luke 19, 14, where our Saviour takes notice of the Jews not receiving him as the Messiah, he expresses it thus, we will not have this man to reign over us.
it is not enough to believe him to be the Messiah, unless we also obey his laws, and take him to be our king to reign over us. Matthew 22. 11 to 13, he that had not on the wedding, garment, though he accepted of the invitation, and came to the wedding, was cast into utter darkness. By the wedding, garment, it is evident good works are meant here, that wedding, garment of fine linen, clean, and white, which we are told, Revelation 19, 8, is the common righteous acts of the saints, or, as Saint Paul calls it, Ephesians 4. 1, the walking worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. This appears from the parable itself. The kingdom of heaven, says our Saviour, verse 2, is like unto a king, who made a marriage for his son. And here he distinguishes those who were invited, into three sorts, 1, those who were invited, and came not, 1, e, those who had the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God proposed to them, but believed not. 2. Those who came, but had not on a wedding, garment, 1. e. Believed Jesus to be the Messiah, but were not new clad, as I may so say, with a true repentance, and amendment of life, nor adorned with those virtues, which the Apostle, Colossians 3. requires to be put on. 3. Those who were invited, did come, and had on the wedding, garment, 1. e. Heard the gospel, believed Jesus to be the Messiah, and sincerely obeyed his laws. These three sorts are plainly designed here, whereof the last only were the blessed, who were to enjoy the kingdom prepared for them. Matthew 23. Be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even the Messiah and ye are all brethren, and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even the Messiah, but he that is greatest amongst you, shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself, shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself, shall be exalted. Luke 21. 34 take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be at any time overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness, and cares of this life. Luke 22. 25, He said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them, are called benefactors, but ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. John 13. 34, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. This command, of loving one another, is repeated again, chapter 15. 12, and 17. John 14. 15, If ye love me, keep my commandments. Verse 21, He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me, shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and manifest myself to him. Verse 23, If a man loveth me he will keep my words. Verse 24, He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. John 15. 8. In this is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Verse 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you, if ye do whatsoever I command you, if ye do whatsoever